Alright folks, welcome back to week 4 of me going through phase 3 of the MCU. And today we'll be deep diving into the style of everyone's favourite Marvel character in the MCU. And that is Spider-Man with Homecoming. This is a film produced by Columbia Pictures and Marvel Studios. It was released by Sony Pictures Releasing, is the second Spidey reboot and is the 16th film in the MCU. The film was directed by John Watts and was written by Jonathan Goldstein, John Francis Daly, Christopher Ford, Chris McKenna, Eric Summers and Watts himself. This film follows our young hero after his experience with the Avengers and he is now back home with Aunt May, but this time he has Tony Stark looking after him. However, being a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man is no longer enough and he must face off against the Vulture to prove he is a worthy mightiest hero. Tom Holland once again returns as our Peter Parker and we have now seen him finish off his first trilogy in No Way Home. His villain Vulture is played by Michael Keaton who will return in Morbius. Tony Stark and his team return to support our Spidey. These three are obviously played by Robert Downey Jr, Jon Favreau and Gwyneth Paltrow, even though she doesn't remember or exactly care. This time Peter has his own teammate in the form of Ned Leeds who is played by Jacob Batalon. His love interest of this film is Liz played by Laura Harrier and his future love interest MJ is played by Zendaya in this film. His bully Flash is this time played by Tony Revololi. I probably fucked that name up, I'm very sorry my man. And a person to actually punch Peter at the school is well Shocker played by Bokeem Woodbine. Then finally our loving Aunt May is played by Marissa Tomei. However, how did we even get into this position? Well, after the 2014 Sony Hackens, emails between Amy Pascal and Doug Belgrad released it in that they wanted Marvel Studios to produce the new Spider-Man film. However, here they would still be in control of practically everything. All that Marvel Studios would be doing is just producing. However, then talks broke down and they carried on plans for the Amazing Spider-Man 3 and many other spin-offs. Although in February 2015, the two studios actually finally announced that they were working together on a new Spider-Man film, with Faggy and Pascal producing together. It has also been revealed that Marvel had already had plans for the character to join the universe since October 2014. They had a plan A, however they had a plan B in case they had the deal for the character to appear. Avi Arad and Matt Tomac were planning to return to produce, however neither Mark Webb or Andrew Garfield would be returning. First runners to replace these two were Drew Goddard to direct, with either Logan Lerman or Dylan O'Brien to star. It is now known information the reason Goddard was considered to direct first was because he was going to direct the planned Sinister Six film, which was the reason he actually turned down this reboot, since he spent the last year planning a film for the hero's villains, not the actual hero himself. Faggy first revealed that the hero will be as 15 or 16 and revealed that this film was never going to be an origin story while promoting Age of Ultron. Then in April 2015, Nat Wolf, Asa Butterfield, Timothy Chalmette, Liam James and Tom Holland were all under consideration to be our new Spider-Man. Overall, Holland was in front lines with Asa Butterfield. For directors, in May 2015, Jonathan Levine, Ted Melfi, Jason Moore, Jared Hess, then the writing duo John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein were all being considered to direct. By June 2015, Levine and Melfi were the frontrunners, however Watts was also then being considered. Watts was able to read the Civil War script, got to talk with the Russo brothers and was on set for the specific character scenes. In July 2015, it was reported that Marissa Tomei had been offered to play Aunt May, and it was also revealed that Daly and Goldstein had begun negotiations to write after not getting the director role. Both then got the role and said that this film was going to be about Peter finding his place in the MCU, overall him getting used to his powers. They also wanted to avoid the skyscrapers of Manhattan, since they were used so much in the previous Spidey films. Walter said that he was already looking into making a coming of age story, so when he heard that this version of the character was going to be younger, he went for it. He also reread original Spider-Man comics for that preparation, and he felt this all made him see a new light on why the character was so popular. Noted influences have now been Ultimate Spider-Man and Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane. In January 2016, Sony shifted the film's release date to July 7th, 2017. J.K. Simmons also had expressed his interest in returning as J. Jonah Jameson. In early March, Zendaya was cast to be as MJ, and Tomei was confirmed to be as May. The following month, Feige confirmed that characters from previous MCU films would appear. Sony then announced the film's title at CinemaCon 2016, and it is a reference to the traditional event in high school, 
and it is also a nod to Spider-Man coming home to the MCU. Revololi, who actually originally auditioned to be Peter, Laura Harrier and Robert Downey Jr. were then revealed to be in the film. In April, Keaton ended talks to play a villain, but dropped out due to scheduling conflicts with the founder. However, he soon re-entered talks after the change in the schedule for that specific film. He then closed the deal in late May. It's also been revealed that Mark Hamill's actually interested in playing the role if Keaton could not. Going back to J.K. Simmons, one of the producers unfortunately confirmed that they were thinking of including the Daily Beagle, but they just ended up deciding not to. Principal photography began on June 20th, 2016 at Pinewood Atlanta Studios in Georgia. Salvatro Totino served as director of photography. Filming also took place in Atlanta. Overall, Holland said building New York sets was much cheaper than actually filming in New York. A replica of the Staten Ferry was also built in Atlanta. At San Diego Comic Con 2016, Marvel confirmed the castings of Keaton, Zendaya, Harrier, Revololi, Woodbine, Battlelord, and even David Glover was revealed to be in the film. It was even revealed that Eric Pearson had done some uncredited writing on the film. McKenna and Summers also joined the writing team around the same time to deal with changes in the script during filming. In August, Michael Chonas joined the cast as the Tinkerer. Then by September 2016, Favreau confirmed to return as Happy and filming finished in Atlanta and moved back to New York. UFC fighter Tyron Woodley had also said around the time that he was considered for a role in the film, but dropped out due to commitments with Fox Sports. Filming finally wrapped on October 2nd, 2016 in New York, with some additional filming happening in Berlin, Germany. In March 2017, Harry stated that this film was undergoing reshoots, and Evans was even going to appear as Captain America in some instructional fitness videos. Watts was very inspired by the President's Fitness Challenge for this. Goldstein has also said that more videos featuring the Avengers was planned, however, we don't know what exactly happened to them. Watts completed work on the film at the beginning of June 2017, overall approving the final visual effects shots. Overall, he has said he had full creative vision on the film with no comments off Marvel or Sony whatsoever. It's also been revealed that the homage to The Amazing Spider-Man issue 33 was something Kevin Feige wanted for a long time. While promoting Doctor Strange, he had also revealed that Michael Gianciano would be composing the film and recording for the soundtrack began on April 11th, 2017. The score overall includes the theme from the original 1960s animated series as well. The film had its premiere at the TCL Chinese Theatre in Hollywood on June 28th, 2017 and was released in the UK on July 5th. The film was then released in the US on July 7th. The film was released digitally on September 26, 2017 and was then released on disc on October 17, 2017. The film made $334.2 million in the US and made $546 million everywhere else, overall making $880.2 million. In September 24th, 2017, it was confirmed to be the highest grossing superhero film of 2017 and became the sixth largest film based on a Marvel character. Rotten Tomatoes gave the film 92% based on 394 reviews and Metacritic gave it 73 out of 100 based on 51 reviews. The film won five awards overall for its casting and stating it was the best movie of the summer. Honestly, this film isn't an exact masterpiece to me, but it is a fun introducing for this version of Spider-Man. I'd just say a massive problem to me is the underwriting of a few characters. Liz has a bland interest and Flash is now just a cocky nerd instead of being a jock. However, I can say a lot of these characters, especially Flash, hasn't exactly been explored a lot in these past films. And to be fair, I appreciate how they at least tried to change some characters so we wouldn't have a repeat of the same Spider-Man media over and over again. I'm not sure if people are exactly going to agree with me here, but I think this film kind of works in the typical MCU style of filmmaking really well. It still feels bold and that is thanks to its colours and special effects. Apart from when they CGI over the practical costume, I've never gotten that. Michael Giancho also makes a fantastic score here, where you both have a feel of the Avengers and Spider-Man. Honestly, even though I'm a Spider-Man fanboy and nitpick some character choices, I still think the script is really well written. The story really works well with showing how much Tony Stark means to Peter Parker, but also makes Peter realise how he can be a better hero. Picking John Watts is actually a really good choice for Marvel and Sony because I feel him and Tom Holland really do a wonderful job with this version of the character. You see the differences between the awkward high schooler and the characteristic superhero. Even then, our hero isn't great here, but we also have Michael Keaton playing the spectacular Vulture. 
He is overall much more of a complex villain compared to the MCU villains before him. He is a menace and also a father just wanting to provide for his family. Overall again, this is a brilliant introduction to the MCU Spider-Man. Well, I'm kind of sick of people shitting on this particular film just because it's worst sequel. So anyways, that was the making and my review on Spider-Man Homecoming. I've talked about this specific version of the character and his first two films a lot on my channel, but I feel since then I've changed my opinion a lot. I definitely remember in the earlier days I very much defended Homecoming and Far From Home when I was younger, but I can admit since then I became the typical Spidey fan who was very much just shitting on it. But after giving the, every single Spider-Man film a rewatch before No Way Home and watching No Way Home itself, I can definitely say I much more appreciate this film and Far From Home. I definitely appreciate this one a lot more from Far From Home, however. And yeah, that's really all I have to say about my opinions. What are yours? Please comment down below your opinions on the film because I'd really love to hear them. And please like and subscribe if you did like the video. It makes my day along with actually talking about stuff I love and editing my videos. So yeah, I don't really have a lot to say at the end of this video. So I guess I'll see you next week of Phase 3. Hmm.